الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله جزاكم الله خيرا في attending this is class 12 out of the 13 week course um, we're having to squeeze it at the end because Ramadan is starting soon inshallah so this is just going to be a revision class from lesson 1 to lesson 10 and I'm going to start it off by going over the homework for lesson 10 and the answers for the test in lesson 10 and then I will um, go through the main points of what we learn in each class it will be recorded it's recorded so it'll be on YouTube inshallah so let's let's start so the homework was determining the ism fa'il for kafara so determine basically the doer of kafara so it goes in the fa'ilun pattern and kafirun is disbeliever so this is just the homework going through the homework write the ism maf'ul of qatala and akala so qatala means to kill he killed so maqtulun you put qatala into this pattern as we did in the last lesson so maqtulun is killed and ma'kulun is eaten like in surah fil faja'alahum ka'asfim ma'kul eaten um, the three question three write the master of dhakara so if you go back to your notes you'll have a look there the answer uh, it follows a fitlun pattern so dhakara becomes dhikrun dhikrun means remembrance so we did this last lesson write the ism makan of darasa so basically the pattern that shows you the place of that thing so madrasatun is the ism makan the place of where darasa is done write the name of the tool of araja araja means to go up so we, if you look in the notes you will see the answer was mi'rajun mi'rajun if you haven't done the course and you just you know you've come across this video then this is not gonna you know make sense to you because um we you know this is something that we have covered in the in the lessons you'd have to go back to the playlist that I'll, inshallah, I will put in the description once it's ready and then you can sort of learn and do the course yourself online inshallah and this was a test that I just posted out today I know I just posted it out today I wanted to go over the test because um, on Wednesday we're just going to do the Hushu talk and there were two translations so I want to have this homework and test out of the way done so if you still got to do your test then just um, ignore for the next, you know, 10 minutes. Because I'm going to go through the answers. So determine the ism fa'il of the following verbs. Convert the following verbs into the doer of that verb. So ghafara becomes ghafirun. Ghafara, he forgave. You put it into the fa'ilun pattern, it becomes ghafirun. Qatala, you put that into the fa'ilun pattern, it becomes qatilun. Ism maf'ul. So put the following verbs into the ism maf'ul pattern. So dhalama, when it goes into maf'ulun, it becomes madhlumun. So he oppressed, and now it becomes oppressed person. The verb is done to it when it goes into the maf'ul pattern. Alima, going through the maf'ul pattern, becomes ma'lumun. Ma'lumun is when the thing, you know, he knew, and when the known is, the, the he knew is done then it's, it's, it translates as known. And the test was quite simple. It's only six questions this time. So, وَدَخَلَ And he entered. جَنَّةُ Sorry, جَنَّةَهُ جَنَّةَ It's mansub, so it's not the doer. So the doer, we don't know who the doer was. So, وَدَخَلَ He entered. And he entered. جَنَّةَهُ In his jannah. So he entered his garden. Wahua and he. Zalimun. So the context of the sentence tells you it's, it was past. Talking about something that's happened. So while he was. Zalimun. Unjust. Linafsi he. So he was being unjust to himself. Linafsi. He. His. His self. Himself. Wama zalamna hum. Wama and not. Zalamna. Zalamna means we oppressed 
whom them so and not we oppressed whom them so and we did not oppress walakin in urdu we say lakin same thing but kanu they all were whom they adhalimina they were the wrongdoers so this was the these are the answers to the test and I just, by the way, I just want to say that um, at th in 15 minutes, 25, yeah? in 15 minutes, um, I'm going to go off to read Maghrib Salah. The times have changed. Now Maghrib time is coming in our class time. So I'm going to go off at 35, which is 15 minutes time, inshallah, to go read Maghrib. And then I'll come back in about 15 minutes and we'll continue, inshallah. Anybody else in the UK at that time, then you can read your Maghrib as well. So remember, so this is now we're going into lesson one. Remember this graph I showed you? This graph was a graph of the students, right? At the start, remember I said there was that many students and it always comes down in any in any course, really, because it requires commitment just to log in every week. So you guys who have come to the end, you've done a fantastic job. Yeah? And, you know, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who we thank because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, with only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's, only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission are we allowed to complete things even do things but even complete things so you know give yourselves a pat on the back right so lesson one i've got roughly 10 minutes to spend on each lesson roughly to get it all done in our allocated time bismillah rahman rahim so lesson one we talked about how there are three sorts of words in arabic three sorts of you know categories of words one is ism nouns Kitabun, Rajulun, Qalamun, Filun, Baqaratun. Then you have verbs which are to do, you know, we're talking about to study, to know, to kill, to act, to find. And then you've got like particles, words like this, on, from, in, whom, to. We also mentioned that look at the endings of the nouns, they all end in double dhamma, dopesh, right? I said them both. I said dopesh for the people who understand dopesh. I'm a dopesh person. And um, dhammatain for the people who understand dhamma or two dhammas. Right. So this was just an example. And then here, a noun by itself, it means a and whatever the noun means. So when you have, you know, masjidun, it means a masjid. Imamun, an imam. Kitabun, a book. And then these were the three ways we talked about how you can refer to a noun. So, hadha means, this is. And then, kitabun, this is a book. Thalika is for when it's far away, further away. Thalika, that is a book. And huwa is when you're talking about it, when you say it. So, it is a book. Or, you also use huwa for he as well, he is, if you're talking about a person. Okay, so then we talked about Arabic having genders. So everything in Arabic has a gender. Right? It's either masculine or it's feminine nouns. So how can you tell if something is feminine? So we do work out the feminine. Once we know the feminine rules, we know everything else is masculine, remember? So the first thing we said is any word that ends in a ta marbuta, this one here, yeah. Do I have a graph for our class? Yeah, our class was pretty much that as well. Yeah, we started off with about 500 people, it went down to about 150 who were attending live. Because the good thing was, there's lots of people in there's people in Pakistan, India, and other places that can't, you know, it'll be three o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning for the live class. So, a lot there was quite a few people I'm hoping who were just relying on the recordings. Okay, but yeah, that graph sort of similar, it matched uh, in the ratios, it matched pretty much ours. Okay, so something, a noun that ends in ta marbuta is feminine. Right? Um, so, jannatun, ayatun, it's where you get, you know, jameel is a boy's name, jamila is a girl's name, it's a ta marbuta at the end. Salih, saliha, yeah, um, abid, abida. Hafs, hafsa, right? So, tamar buta ending denotes that the word is feminine. Also, if a word, 
Another way to tell is if a word is taught, it's a woman itself, mother. Uh, bintun is um, a daughter. I should actually put the meaning down here, but anyway, I haven't. Right, so mother here, daughter here. Right, so these are feminine words because they're talking about women. They are women themselves. So that's another way to determine if a word is feminine. Another way is any body part that comes in pairs. So hands are feminine, ears are feminine, eyes are feminine, nose is not feminine, masculine, feet feminine, kidneys feminine. That's the other way. And the last way is, as some people say, because the Arabs said so. So there were some words that were always historically known to be fem uh, feminine. They were, they were used as feminine words by the Arabs. So those, there's, there's maybe about, I don't know, just a handful, maybe a 10, 15, I don't know, something, you know, something small. Like shamsun, sama'un, jahannamu, sabilun, nafsun. Them are examples of feminine words. Everything else is masculine, right? Everything else is masculine. And the reason we needed to know that is so that you could just appreciate that there are two ways in which you can say this is. For a masculine word, you're going to use hadha. For a feminine word, you're going to use hadhihi. So hadha kitabun, that means this is a book. In feminine land, hadhihi shajaratun, this is a tree. You can't say hadha shajaratun because hadha, hadha is the male way of saying this is. So hadha goes with the masculine word, hadhihi goes with the feminine word. Is it super important that you know that? It's more important that you understand it because in the Quran it's already written. If you see hadha, you know automatically it's talking about this is, and you know the next word is masculine. If you see hadhihi jahannam, you know jahannam is feminine because hadhihi has been used. But this is to show you what's going on. And so then you were asked to learn hadha hadhihi. Thalika is masculine, it is. Tilka is feminine, it is. Hua is he is or it is masculine and here is she is or it is for feminine so this is what you had to learn for lesson one these are how many times these words roughly come in the Quran so lots and lots and lots so you've got to learn these and then we talked about this just very quickly so in Arabic the adjective comes after the noun so in English you will say the car big in Arabic you'll say oh sorry in English you'll say <laughs> the big car in Arabic you say the car big so you in Arabic you say the word and then you describe it afterwards right so Quranun Karimun a noble Quran so Quran is mentioned first and then its characteristic is mentioned afterwards but you translate it in English so in English you have to say it like you say in English a noble Quran so we talked about this that the adjective will match the noun in three ways. If the noun is singular, the adjective is going to be singular. We'll do that. In, we did that then in lesson two. If the noun is masculine, the adjective has to be masculine. It can't be Quranun Karimatun. It can't be that because now Quran is masculine, so it has to be Quranun Karimun. And the other way is the endings match. Look, double dhamma, dopesh, because Quranun is dopesh. Double Dhamma. Again, Ilahun Wahidun Wahidun, same with that. And then we did these verses, not going to go through the verses. Uh, that's the different font. But you could see, you know, everything being applied. Look, Thalika, Thalika Yomun, for example. That is a day. Masculine way of saying it because day is masculine. Hatha Yomun, this is a day. This is masculine because this word is masculine. Here, fitnatun, it is a test. It's here because fitnatun is a girl word. Why? Because, feminine, because, tamul buta at the end. So, I'm not going to go through these verses. Um, and this was, this was the vocabulary we learned and the number of times these words come in the Quran, roughly. That was the homework. Lesson two. That took us nine minutes, including doing the homework. So, I think I can slow down a bit. So lesson two, we talked about grammar being really important in Arabic. But I also mentioned you don't need to know lots of grammar rules to understand the Quran. Just one or two grammar rules and you're fine for the general literal meaning of the Quran. So that's why this, talk, this 
uh, class didn't concentrate on grammar. What it concentrated on is surf, which is morphology. How do you change the word to make new meanings? That you need to understand the Quran. So I didn't go too much into grammar, but just a few items I did need to go in. And that was um, this verse that I talked about. It was, you know, reported in the previous times that Umar radiallahu anhu, he heard somebody reading this warasula and it changed the meaning, right? Warasula, it changed the meaning. Or warasuli, one of them two. Right, so grammar was then written down. I just wanted to show you this verse comes in the Quran. وَقَتَلَ دَاوُودُ جَالُوتَ Dawood killed Jalut. If you were to get this Dhamma and this Fatha and swap them, put the Dhamma there and you put the Fatha there, so instead if you say وَقَتَلَ دَاوُودَ جَالُوتُ then that would mean Jalut killed Dawood al -Islam. So that's how, and the grammar is the ending, how the word ends, that's the grammar there, the ending of the word, right? So grammar is very important and this particular rule I needed to teach you because you need that rule to be able to understand the literal meaning of many verses. So, many sentences. So for that we learnt this. That nouns have three cases, they come in three cases. Marfu, and the marfu is any noun in the singular, in the singular only, right? We'll dual and plural come afterwards. In the singular, any noun that ends in a double dhamma or a single dhamma is described as marfu. It's just the case that it's in, it's a case, right? Like capitals, for example. Like you write house in capitals, that's marfu, for example. You write house in um, small letters, that's mansub. And you write house underlined, that's majroor. Meaning it's the same word, but it's just got a bit of a different slant on it, that's all. Which you'll need which you need afterwards, okay? Any singular noun that ends in a double fatha or a single fatha, it is described as a mansub word. It's case is mansub. And any word that is um, ending in kasra or double kasra, so zair or dozer, then it is um, described as a majroor word. So you should be able to just look at a word and I should, if I ask you what case is that word, you should be able to say, ah, it's marfu. I might say in this sentence, find a marfu word. You need to be able to look at it and ah, that one there. It's needed. So that's why we studied it. And then also we also talked about the sort of effect of getting a word, like kitabun, and sticking an al in front of it. When you stick an al in front of the word, it becomes the. Al means the. So Look, this one, kitabun here, it became al-kitabu. When you put the al in front, you've added some ink on this side, you have to knock some ink off that side. So what happens is when you add al, the double ending drops to single ending. So kitabun means a book, al-kitabu means the book. If you wrote al-kitabun, you've just, you just written it wrong. People know what you're talking about, but people know that you've written it wrong, you don't understand um, a rule of Arabic. So, when Al is added, the Dhamma becomes single. The ending here becomes single too. The, the doubles just become single. So in the Quran you see, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ Because the Al is there. Right? So Al makes it the, and without the Al, it, the, the meaning of the word is a. And then we did this, remember we had some practice with this. I've cut some out just, you know, because it's going to take too long. So kitabun is indefinite. With the al, it's definite. With the, without the al, it's indefinite. It's masculine and it's marfu. So we just did a few of these to get some practice. This is feminine because the ta'am al there. It's definite because the al and the case is majroor. So this was just to get some um, practice. And then we did this, again it's just a repeat of the previous slide. Um, what did I want to demonstrate in this? Yes, what I want to demonstrate in this was, this is definite, this is indefinite, so this is indefinite. This one has an al, so its definition, its explanation, its adjective is going to have an al. Right? Then we did these verses, same verses in the different script. And then same verses again in the different script. Then with the words we had to learn. 
Look, min and man, look how many times, three, eight, seven, six times in the Quran, right? Min or man. So lots. If you're if you're at a point where you're struggling with these words, use Ramadan or use you know your free time after this course to go over these words, to go over the course, in fact. Right, lesson three. Is it time? Okay, so it's um, 35. I'm just going to be out for about 15 minutes. Those in the UK, which is most of you, um, inshallah, you'll be you know, able to read your salah as well in this time. Um, if you live in Aberdeen or if you live in Dundee somewhere there, then your Maghrib time might actually start a bit after when we get back, maybe. Um, I do know some, someone who's in Aberdeen. Right, so, um, and if you're in London, you might, yeah, it might be a bit squeezed, I'm not sure. But um, we'll be back in 15 minutes, so we'll be back at, inshallah, 7, 7.50. I'll just leave everything on, I'll just, um, yeah, I'll see you then, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, ya rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Okay, so we were, just come back from the break. And lesson three was talking about plurals. So, I had a slide here. Muslims plus S gives the plural Muslims. Can we do the same to in Arabic? Can we do Muslimun plus a scene give Muslims? Does that work? Right. You wish. Arabic is more powerful than that, and um, you can do a lot more with Arabic using the plurals that Arabic has. It is a bit complicated, but once you learn it, it's powerful. So in Arabic, just before we, um, yeah. Before we go on to that, we have a word for singular. We have a separate word for dual. Dual is two. Two of those. So one Muslim, two Muslims, and then um, plural is three plus. So in English, we have Muslim and Muslims. That's it. One Muslim and two plus Muslims. In Arabic, we have singular Muslim. Then we have a word for dual, muslimani. And then we have a word for plural, muslimuna. Same with this, ayatun, ayatani, ayatun. And then this one also. So Arabic has singular, it has dual, and it has plural. And then there are three types of plural in Arabic. One is sound masculine plural. One is sound feminine plural. One is broken plural. So basically in the class we sort of ask people, can you tell the difference, what's going on? So the reason why this one is called, called masculine is because it's a masculine word. Same with this one, feminine. Feminine word. Right, Dharma Vulta makes it feminine. But why is it called sound? And why is this one called broken? So we mentioned the sound is mentioned because look at the plural. The original word is still intact. It's still, it's still sound. Sound meaning intact and whole. Right? You just got some ending added to it. So this is sound, masculine, plural. With this one, you know, the original word is Muslim. So that is still intact. The original word is Muslim. That's still intact. You've added something to the end to make it plural. So these are both sound plurals. This one is broken plural because... Rijalun, something has come in the middle and broken the original word. So this is a broken plural. Again, qalbun is heart, a heart, and qulubun is hearts. So we can see here, a wow has come in and broken the original word. So this is called bro broken plural. In this course, we're not going to do broken plurals. We're just going to do sound plurals. Because broken plurals are a bit tricky, trickier. And we try to cover the easiest stuff that's going to gain you the biggest bang for the book. Right. So, this is the table and we have to, you know, we have to learn this table. If you still don't know it, just, you know, try your best. And remember, in this whole course, if you are struggling, drop anything to do with dual. Just drop, delete dual completely, right? If you're struggling and you can't hack all the tables... You know, better than leaving everything, because, you know, there's a saying, if you can't do everything, don't leave everything. Don't close off the course because you can't, you're struggling. I'll give you a cut-down version. And what the cut-down version is, is delete all the duels. The dual column, imagine it doesn't exist. Because dual doesn't come up so much, 
in Arabic in the Quran as much as singular and plural does. Right? So, yes. Cross that out if, you, if you're struggling. If you're not struggling, then do it all because you're going to benefit more. Inshallah. So, Muslimun, Muslimani. You stick an Ani on, the dual, to make it a dual. And Una to make it plural. And this is for Marfu' words. Now, remember what we said, Marfu' ends in Dhamma or Dhammataini, ends in Pesh or Dopesh. That's only for singular. In dual, Ani is Marfu'. Ani is Marfu'. Ani is Marfu. And Marfu is that it means raised. It's like the main one, the default one. Right? And I said Ani, Arnold Schwarzenegger Ani is strong, isn't he? So you can maybe think of it like that and say, you know, raised, he's strong, his muscles, right? So Ani is Marfu. Una is Marfu. And you can see that the Una part from the meme Dhamma is still coming. The Dhamma is still coming there. Right? So Muslimuna is the marfu' way. So these are the marfu' ways of saying Muslim. They mean the same thing. Look, I'm Muslim here. I'm Muslim in Mansub. I'm Muslim in Majroor. It's just, you have to learn the cases because in the sentence, something is going on and you have to be able to determine where is the marfu', where is the Mansub, right? Because it does affect the meaning. That's fine. Maghrib is here for you now. You go and pray. It'd be interesting to know where you, whereabouts in the UK you are. Right, okay, so maybe it's going to be right further up north or maybe down, maybe Cornwall area, maybe there somewhere, right? So, Musliman is Mansub, still means a Muslim. Muslimaini is how you say it to Newcastle. Oh, Newcastle. Not Maghrib time happening in Newcastle, okay. Fair news. Oh, somebody, somebody else, okay. <laughs> okay, right. Muslimina is how you say plural, okay? But in Mansub or Majroor land, they are both the same. Look, these four are both the same. Aini and Aini, Ina and Ina. So it's either going to be Mansub or Majroor in the sentence. But you just need to know that Una is Marfu, Ina is Mansub, and they are all plurals. All right. Okay, so this was a table we have to learn. So in this table, remember these, the reds are the templates. So you can put kafirun, kafirani, kafiruna, valimun, valimani, valimuna, masjidun, uh, masjidani, well, this is a broken, broken plural. Uh, let's just do another one. Um, hafizun, hafizani, hafizuna, sadiqun, Sadiqani, Sadiquna. Once you know the template, the ones in red, you can put many uh, words in there, and you, when you put the meaning on, it'll make the new word. You know, the template ending is the same. Um, and then in Mansub land, you just say, instead of Kafiruna, you say Kafirina, and it means the same thing. Kafirina, Kafirina, Kafiruna means the same thing. It means disbelievers. So we did that. This is the feminine one. Feminine, similar, ani for marfu, but look at the ending, atun. This is how the masculine looked, this is how the feminine looked. Look, look at the difference. So if you look at the dual column, just the, the endings are the same. It's just that you got a ta, remember the ta, the closed ta that makes it a woman. So that ta is like opened up now, right? So muslimatani, muslimataini. The only main difference here is this one. Look, Muslimuna becomes Muslimatun and Muslimatin, Muslimatin. It looks Majroor, but it could be Mansub or Majroor. Right? So this was this, and as I said, feminines don't come up too much, and the feminine terminology generally doesn't come, come in the Quran as much as the masculine one, because masculine is for male and mixed. So men and women are referred to with the masculine terminology. So kulia yul kafirun, kafirun is a masculine way, like this one here, kafirun, but it's including women as well. So when a woman word is mentioned, it's women exclusively only, no male in there. But when a masculine word is used, it could be male only, but the majority of the time it's everybody. So that's why 
um, you know, masculine terminology is used more in the Quran and in Arabic. So the summary of that was male plural endings are either ina or una. Ina or una. And feminine plurals are, uh, you know, sound plurals either end in atin or atun. So that's all we sort of learned there. Then we had some practice mu'minuna. Plural. As soon as you see una, plural, you just need to know what this word means. Mu'min, una, believe in men. Gafi, rina. Ina is also plural. Disbelievers, men. Valimina. Again, valim, oppressor. And then ina is plural. Oppressors. Mu'minatunna. This is atun, is women plural. Sadiqatin. Again, atin is plural for women as long as you know what sadiq means truthful sadiqa truthful woman then you know atin is just plural and then we did this verse here and this just showed you look muslimina wal muslimati wal mu'minina wal mu'minati wal qanitina wal qanitati this is showing you the a verse a beautiful verse in the quran that has the men and the women and what i mentioned is normally muslimina is going to be men and women everybody but when it's mentioned along with the woman way of saying it, then we know this is only talking about the men. Right? And there's only maybe a, a small amount of times that, you know, compared to the masculine, it's only a small amount of times that the feminine plurals come in the Quran. And um, this one, is this lesson three? Yeah, so we broke lesson three down into two parts because it's quite heavy. The foot, that Last year when I taught it, people were like, oh... That's why we've taught us so much in on lesson three. So I broke it down into two parts. So this was the part two of lesson three. It's basically learning this table. And Zakilah to Zakilah Khair. Um Jazahallah Khair actually. <laughs> May Allah reward her. Um the sister who sort of gave this idea of putting the you know the masculine in blue and the feminine in pink. And some I put some extra explanation here and I used her tip to change this like this so you can see it you know different people different things you know reverberate for different people someone might like this color someone like might like they'll put three here you know i'm hoping you know it satisfies as many people as we can right so here third person explained that third person you're talking referring to somebody who's not present right so he they both they all who are whom are whom and i've got recordings where i just um, repeat this about five times so that you can listen to it, repeat and repeat and get it in your head, right? Um, he, ah, hum, ah, hum. So these are separate pronouns, remember? Separate pronouns, these are just like, you want to say, he is, or it is. You say, huwa kitabun, it is a book. But how do you say them two Muslims? Huma muslimani. How do you say them all Muslims? Hum muslimuna. So again, so this was the table, and this out of the four main tables in this course, this is number four, fourth important, in my opinion. So it was just a matter of learning these. And I hope you all did. That's how many times they roughly come in the Quran. That's in black, if you like it in black. And this is a good one, because this shows you the commonality. The third persons all start off with ha. And the second persons all start off with the alif. So this is, you know, a, a slide that I think you might benefit from. And here is, here are the verses. So we did the verses, so I'm not going to go into them. That was the homework. Okay, lesson four. Um, how, how are we doing for time? So 9.20, 9.20 is the time we've finish I think isn't it or 9 15 I think 9 15 inshallah we've got about an hour um, I think we do less than four then maybe have a five minute break you like that five minute break sorry we've got a bit of action happening here today uh, right right okay so lesson four so these were the attached pronouns these are the ones that come and attach onto the word so you've got um, who is, when you're talking about his, like Kitabuhu, his book. Kitabuhu ma, their two's book. Kitabuhum, their all's book. Kitabuha, her book. 
Kitabu Huma, their two's book. Kitabu Hunna, their all's book, women. And then Kitabu Ka, your book, masculine. <coughs> Kitabu Kuma, your two's book, masculine. Kitabu Kum, your all's book, masculine. And these endings, you can put them on nouns, you can put them on verbs. These are powerful. This is table number one. The most important table in this course, in my opinion. If you do not know this table, you are nowhere. You are nowhere, I'm telling you. Meaning, you're not going to understand. This comes everywhere. You know, people texting me afterwards, somebody texted me afterwards saying, you're right, it comes everywhere. You know, <laughs> it really does. It comes everywhere. Right? So, we say, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, him. May Allah be pleased with, anhu, him. Aisha radiallahu anha, may Allah be, be pleased with her. That's why I said, Jazahallah khair. Because I'm saying Jazakallah khair to the sister. So Jazakallah khair, may Allah reward her. So I use this one. Right? Kitabi, my book. Kitabuna, our book. Rabbuna, our Lord. Rabbi, our Lord. I said my Lord. Right? Rabbuka, your Lord. Rabbuna, our Lord. Rabbukum, your all's Lord. Rabbuhum, their all's Lord. Right, so this comes everywhere. So you've got to really clock onto this one. This is super important, this one. These two are the same. These two are the same. That's the amount of times, you know, it attaches onto words, roughly. It's coming everywhere. We're talking in the thousands. So again, this looks nice and colourful. Okay, so it's basically the ha, look, the commonality. Third person, when you're talking about somebody who's not, when you're talking about someone who's not present, then it's beginning with ha. So, kitabuhum, kitabuhuma, rabbuhum, rabbuha, rabbuhu, talking about them who are not present, their lord, their two's lord, his lord, her lord, all start off with ha. It's similar to the previous table we just did, right? These all start off with ka. Rabbuka, your Lord. Rabbukuma, your two's Lord. So for a sister, so someone's asking, Ya Jazahallah khair means, may Allah reward her. This one here, her. But when you send it to a sister, you know, it's just hearing you, then you say Jazakillah khair. That's the proper way of saying it. Jazakillah khair. So Jazakillah khair means, may Allah reward you. To a sister. To a brother, Jazakallah khair. But, you know, we all just say Jazakallah khair. We all just say that for anybody. And what we're doing there, we're saying Jazak. We're putting a sukoon on there. Jazak, Allah khair. Then it works for everything. It works for brothers and sisters. So that's what we just say. Right? Right. So, yeah, this is super, duper important, this one. Right? Kitabuhu is an example. We went through some examples. Kitabuhu is his book because the who makes it his. Kitabuha, her book. The ha makes it hers. Kitabu kum, kum is for second person, you all, male. Kitabu kum, your all's book. And then we did ala, ala means on, and then the same things works on ala. So we got ala, on, 722, look at that. And then you have alayhi, it's the same, ala plus the ha makes he. Sometimes who, sometimes it's he, depending on, you know, what letter comes before it. It's that the Jweed rule is already written in the Quran. As long as you know who or he means his, alayhi on him, or on it, if it's masculine. Alayha on her, or on it, if you're talking about a feminine word. Alayhim on them. So these come, you can just imagine, these come all over the place in the Quran. Yeah, you, you might look at these words and say, yeah, they come everywhere. So alayhim on them. So it's just that attachment that we've just done in that table. You can stick it on these words and it forms many words. Alaykum. Assalamu alaykum. Ala on kum you all. So really when we say assalamu alaykum, we're saying peace be on you all. And they say you're talking to the angels. Islam, the angels as well. So assalamu alaykum means peace be on you all. Alayka assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyu As we read in the salah Peace be on you We're talking uh, about the Prophet ﷺ there 
And we know the Prophet Sallam, when you send salam on the Prophet Sallam, the angel takes it to the Prophet Sallam, takes the salam to the Prophet Sallam. SubhanAllah. Alayki on you, but woman. Alayna as-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi as-salihin. Alayna on us. So it's all from the table. And we've got min. Min means from. Min who? From him. Min ha from her. Min whom? I left these in because I think it's really important that this one sits in. Min whom from them. I'm going through it quick though because this is just revision. Min kum from you all. Min na. Min and na. Na means many times na. Noon whether it's associated, when it's associated with a verb it means we so min min means from and na is us so min na is joined with this shad there's two there really joined so from us min ni from me the ya signifies me and then i went through a verse uh, in the story of um, dawood al-islam where you know just showing you how many times in just that part of a verse and this is a random verse I just chose just open the Quran anywhere because I wanted to see how many times it comes in a random verse so open it anywhere and this one came and this is not even the full verse so one two three four five six seven right you can count them and you can go through that fi means in I look at look look at the number 1218 fi he again the he fi fi he in it I know some people use that to say in it, right? In it, fihi, right? So fiha, in it, but it's feminine, or in her. Fi him, in them. Him makes it them. And then we talked about harf jar. Harf jar are just a, um, a group of words that are known as in English as prepositions. And these are the groups of words. There's other prepositions as well. Some may argue one or two of these are not actual prepositions, but they behave like them. But the book that I, you know, was um, using contained it like this. So I'll put it like this. So fi is a preposition. Min is a preposition. Ala, just, just a type of words. That's it. Just, just a type of word. These are separate. So he said fi masjidin. In a masjid. But these are attached prepositions. They attach onto the word itself. Lil muttaqeen. Bismillah. Kal hijara. Right? So these attach onto the words. These are separate to the words, to the noun. And then we had this. I just displayed this after um, one of the students and, and somebody very close to me. Give me an idea to do this, that do it like this so people can see visually. Fi means in, ala means on, fawqa means above, tahta means underneath, baina means between, and the reason why I'm slightly smiling is because you'll know in a bit. Baina means between, and what happened is, um, you know, when I did this last year, one of the sisters said that what the box is there for. Uh, or why they empty and I said the boxes are there just to show you that Baina is between two boxes and Fi is inside the box so she you know didn't didn't seem to make sense you know she didn't seem to like it so I thought okay I'll change it then so I changed it to what did I change it to my favorite car a Lamborghini I mean look how beautiful that is <laughs> right and then yeah so something there now yeah What's in the other box? The other box, just um, nothing. Just fees driving the car. Fees inside there. And this one, yeah. Just the way it is. Just the way I did it. So you see that once again? Animation? That nice, that. <laughs> right, okay. So, the, the li, the attach, it means for. When it attaches to a noun, right, it has a kasr on it. So, li, and al muttaquna becomes lil muttaqina. It's actually a majrurifier. These harf jar, when they come in front of a noun, it makes the noun majrur. You don't really need to know that so much because it doesn't change the meaning. But you know, I did teach it though later on. So the lamb, when it the lamb means for. 
when it attaches onto a noun, it keeps us kasra li lil muttaqin for the pious, right? When it attaches onto a, a preposition, then the lam the lam it gets a fatah. It means the same thing. So for them, that's the difference I wanted to explain here. The lam attaching onto the noun has a kasra means for. When it attaches onto the attached pronoun, it has a fatha on. So, lahum. So, then we did some more. Lakum, for you all. Look, three, five, six. Laka, for you, singular. For us. For him. Lahu. Laha, for her. Right? So we've just gone over, no we've not even gone over an hour. We've got about an hour left and we are on lesson four. Tushudun Maghrib, so I think we can have a five minute break. What do you say, you happy with that five minute break? My son's doing this. Okay, so we've got a, we've got a yes. Okay, so we'll just have a five minute break. We'll, we'll come back at... 8.23, so five minutes, yeah? Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. So we're on lesson five out of ten. We've got about an hour left, so we might even be able to finish a bit earlier, inshallah. And this was the sort of one of the one of the questions in the homework was to cheer up, so I just put this on. I remember that, right? So access to okay. So lesson five now, right? So this is this was quite an important lesson. This one. So in Arabic we have root words. Root words is like the basic form of a word, and the root word is in fact a verb. It's a verb. A verb is, you know, a doing thing. So, ja'ala, he made. That's a root word. Khalaqa, he created. It's a root word. Kataba, he wrote. That's a root word. And just before I go on, in English, we also have a root word. We have root words in English. So, for example, play. Now, this is a root word. As far as I know, anyway. If you add endings to it, it changes the meaning player. So if you had walk, a different root word, walker. You know what walker means. Not walker's crisps, but walker. Um, player, talker. You know, um, you get, so when you get a root word, you add endings on and it makes words that you're familiar with. Played, talked, walked, laughed. So you put an ED on and it gives it a certain meaning that that verb was done. Ing, walking, talking, playing, laughing, right? So these are endings that you add onto a root word in English and you automatically, you know, know the meaning. And so that was things that come at the end of the word, um, suffix. But then you also have prefixes. So replay, right? Re, redo, re, resign, maybe, maybe resign as well. You're signing, resigning is you're not signing, right? Re, um, let's see what else downplay got them here so replay downplay download reload hey right outplay right so that's an example of root words having certain attachments coming you know in front or after and it changes the meaning remake excellent that's a good one making remake right so in Arabic back in Arabic land we have he created that's a root word and these are just examples just showing you what's going on when you get a ya and you change the khalaqa to like this ya khuluqu, it means he creates so it's become from khalaqa past tense it's become ya khuluqu, present tense he creates khaliqun we did this in lesson 10 khaliqun is a pattern that makes it into the doer of the verb so khaliq is the doer of khalaqa and khalaqu means they all created. It's the plural of this one. He created, they all created. So this was just example to show you that, look, you can change and add words here and there. It's a template. 
once you apply that template, it changes the word. And this is sort of, this is the most important thing you need to know. Also, I mentioned that root words, look, they all, he did, he did that thing. He wrote, he heard, he increased. So we know the root word is always, he did that thing, whatever that verb is. So khaliq, khaliq isn't plural. So somebody's asked that, is khaliq a broken plural? No, khaliq is, um, is broken, but it's not a plural. It's, it's broken up to make a new word, which means the doer of khalaqa. So khaliqun, ka, like for example, kathibun, kafirun, um, um, nasirun. That's the pattern we did in lesson 10, which was last week. Right? So kataba, these are examples of some root words we did. And the reason why I got this slide here is to demonstrate that root words, the first letter has a fatha, a zabr. The third letter has a fatha, a zabr. The middle letter changes. So for kataba, the middle letter has a fatha. For sami'a, the middle letter on this verb has a kasra. And for this one, kathura, the middle letter has, letter has a dhamma. And the whole point of this slide is to show you that most root verbs have a fatha in the middle. Lesser have a kasra and even lesser have a dhamma. That's all that's showing you, right? We did that. This is an example of some letters that you might be acquainted to now after you've done the course. These are examples of some of the letters that are normally added on to root words to make new words. Don't worry about this too much. This is just, you know, just information. And if I give you some information that I think is not so important at this time, but, you know, can do some, some you know, some help, then I'll, I'll let you know. So they're not so important, but you might want to refer back to it after the class, after the whole course. Right. So this is the template for the past tense verbs. And this table I put as number two out of all the important tables, out of the four important tables in the course, I put this at number two because a lot of the Quran is talking about the past stories of the prophets. It's talking about stories. It's talking about the life of the Prophet ﷺ, which is in the past as well. So I feel the past tense verbs um, 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 come in the Quran more. So kataba, he wrote, Kataba, when you put Alif there, that's just a template for they, they both wrote. And Katabu, they all wrote. So you can now, in this table, you can put many, many root words. Khalaqa, khalaqa, khalaqu. Kafara, kafara, kafaru. Kafarat, kafarata, ja'ala, raja'a. You can put different ones, keep the template the same, and you'll know the meaning. So Katabtu means I wrote. Right? Valamtu. I oppressed, ja'altu, I went, rafa'tu, I raised, khalaqtu, means I created, wa ma khalaqtu jinna wal insa illa liya'budun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I did not create, wa ma khalaqtu, yeah, wa ma khalaqtu jinna, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I did not create the jinn, wal insa and uh, mankind, illa liya'budun, except that they worship me. So this is the, the, the template for the past verb, tables and one thing I mentioned the past verb <coughs> table all the additions are suffixes suffixes means the addition comes at the end of the word look apart from the root letter apart from the root word all the additions are coming at the end of the verb that's the way you can tell it's a past tense verb khalaqa khalaqa khalaqu kafara kafara kafaru right so this was the table for past tense. This one here I've highlighted because they're both the same. This one I've made it boy girly. So those people who want to see it in that way, it's there. And this slide, I just put it in there. This is lesson two slide, remember? Huahumahum. I put this in there to show you some similarity. Look at the ending of these words. It's the same ending. So some tables, when you learn them, it helps you learn future tables, the other tables. So look, anta katabta, anti katabti, antuma katabtuma, and antum katabtum, antunna katabtunna. So the endings of that table there and the separate pronouns table for a second person are the same. 
Okay, and then Katabtu, Katabna, Katabna. That was that. So then we had some examples. Ja'alna, we made. Ja'alu, they all made. Wajattu, the tu means I. Khalaqtu, Ja'altu, Rafa'tu. Ta is for you. Qatalta, you killed. And in the Quran it comes, Aqatalta nafsan zakiyatan. Did you kill? Uh, a soul that is um, pure and then the most important rule in Arabic well grammar rule in Arabic that I think is that the doer is always marfu so what we explained here is look at this verse waqatala remember we said waqatala what does waqatala mean it means and he killed that's what qatala means it's root word he killed now who killed Dawood or Jalut two names are mentioned or is the person who killed not mentioned? How can you tell? You cannot translate. You cannot translate the Quran. You cannot translate this if you don't know the meaning. Right? This is why when you learn, when you know some people they do a fantastic job of learning the word to word meaning of, of the Quran. If you do it without understanding anything about Arabic, you will not be able to translate that. You will just have to learn that in this verse, Dawood killed Jalut. You just have to learn it. But there is a way to know, and that way is. The doer of the verb is always marfu. That's why we learned in lesson two or lesson three, marfu, mansu, majur for this rule. Waqatala and he killed. Who killed? Dawudu. Ah, oh, Dawood is marfu. So Dawood is doing the killing. So and he killed. Who killed? Dawood killed. And Jaluta is mansub. It means mansub means that the verb is being done to this word here. So Waqatala and he killed. Who killed? Look for the marfu word. Dawood. Ah, Dawood killed. And Jaluta. Ah, so Dawood killed Jalut. So the doer of the verb is always marfu. And the thing that the verb is done to is always mansub. So fa'il in English would say the subject of the verb is marfu and the object of the verb is mansub. I don't understand object and subject. Object or subject, right? For me, it's, it doesn't work. So I just do the doer is always marfu, and the thing the verb is done to is mansu. But if you, you know, you, you know, you're into, you like your objects and your subjects, then fine, use that. So the subject of the verb is marfu, and the object is mansu. Right? This is important because you cannot translate verses of the Quran. You cannot translate verbal sentences. Sometimes at all, sometimes effectively, without knowing um, this rule. Right? So this is the super golden rule. And in my class, when I used to, when I teach, if I teach in a masjid, I make every single student repeat it. Because one of the benefits of repeating it is you, everybody repeats it, you hear it about 30, 40 times, you've heard it. And then it's your turn. So the doer is always marfu, and the thing that the verb is done to is mansub. So we just did these examples. Sat is the verb. The boy sat, so the boy is going to be marfu, and the chair is the thing that the sitting is being done on, so it's mansub. So we did a few examples like that. The dog is marfu here because the dog is dog is doing the verb, dog. Right. So, and um, the the fence is the thing that the jumping is happening to or happening over, happening to. So the fence is mansub. The man wrote on the paper. The man is marfu and the paper is mansub. Is it the I'm just looking at a question. Is it the last letters of marfu and mansub? Yes, yes, for singular. For dual it's ani and aini, and for plural it's una and ina for masculine. So it's that table we have to do. But for yeah, for for singular words it's ending in dhamma or fatha. The man, so I just did this one as well, and getting a bit sort of, um, I was getting a bit adventurous, so the man looked with envy, so, envy, so the man is doing the looking, and the king is the one that is being looked at. Rich is just a description, king is the noun. So, khalaqa Allahu al-arda, khalaqa means he created. Who created? Whenever you see a verb, look for the marfu, because that will show you who's doing the verb. Sometimes there may not be a marfu, in, in which case you, you don't know who, you know, the, the person, the thing, you know, you don't know who was doing the verb. 
in case of these, you know, obviously who's doing the creating in the Quran, but you know, there's times where, you know, وَوَارِثَ سُلَيْمَانُ دَاوُودَ وَوَارِثَ means, and he inherited, as Urdu we say, وَرَاسَتْ right, وَوَارِثَ, he inherited, who inherited? سُلَيْمَانُ وَوَارِثَ سُلَيْمَانُ سُلَيْمَانُ inherited Dawuda from Dawood, remember he was a son, right, <clears throat> and they inherit prophethood, not the part, not the, um, money so okay khalaqa he created who created allah allah is marfu allah created and what has been created the earth because mansub we did this remember that's why i'm just doing it a bit quick look at this one here khalaqa he created who created from the words from these two words we don't know who created of course we know it's allah but from these two words it's not telling us who created but so sometimes you might get a sentence and you don't know who the doer was from the sentence, from the context you'll know, right? And Arda is the thing that is being created, because it's Mansub. So he created the earth, that's what it stands for, right? Then we did this example here. The doer is there. Fazada humullahu, fazada. So he increased them, whom? Who did? Allah increased them in what? Marada in the disease, their disease. And then just to some examples where you can change the meaning by Nasara helped, the Muslims helped the disbelievers. The Muslimuna is plural, marfu. If you change it, just look, you just change it. The meaning changes opposite. You make that marfu, now they're doing the, cent the, the helping now. So now the disbelievers are helping the Muslims. I know in your books you've got something else. Um, I was keeping the sort of, I was keeping the pattern of Waqatala Dawudu Jaluta, but I thought now it's going on the internet, I need to change it and make it a bit more sort of friendly for, you know, people start assuming the wrong things. So, so your books are old. I'll look at your books next time. Inshallah. And then we just have some more examples like that. And then we just did this finally. This is not applicable anymore. You guys have all done it. Um, you know, it, it is, it actually is intensive. It is quite intensive. Um, and it's just a matter of, you know, just putting your head down, learning those tables. Anyway, some more verses. We like to apply, we like to see where in the Quran is that thing that I've just learned being applied. So that's, you know, that's what these verses are for. Right, lesson six. These words, sorry, let's just go back. So these were now you are learning root words because once you know the templates and you know the meaning of the root word you can understand so the key is to learn root words as many root words as you can with the templates right lesson six so then lesson six was talking about verbs being regular and irregular so we have just done the previous verses were all regular verbs. So I now wanted to show you what the definition of an irregular verb is. So the definition is an irregular verb, or you might call it a weak verb. Weak verb or irregular verb, right? So a weak verb or an irregular verb is a verb in which the root letters contain either an, an alif or a waw or a ya. So them are weak verbs so qala is weak actually qala is actually qaf waw lam right but that waw has disappeared and alif disappeared there right it's weak kana is weak it's got there wajada is weak it's got the waw i think the i think the root word for kana is actually kaf waw noon as well right so that's one way the Root word contains either alif wa ya, it makes it weak. The other way is if um, the second and third letter are both the same, then it's also a weak verb. Everything else is regular. So we've just done regular verbs. And the reason why I taught you about irregular verbs is because the irregular verb does not fit into the table exactly. You can put regular verbs in here, they'll fit irregular verbs you're going to have a problem somewhere or another you're going to have a problem and then you have to 
figure it out and what's going on and why is am I why am I having to bend my mind? Why does it why am I changing things? The endings will stay the same, but something you're doing before the ending to the word to make it fit. So what we did then we went through this one. We went for qala. So in line with the table, qala kataba. So qala, qala, qalu. That's fine. Qalat, qalata. Now over here, it was katabna. So you got to put qala in there. Qala nana. Qalna. How are you gonna do? Qala nana. Oh, it's not. It doesn't sound right. So you know you, that's the problem you've got with irregular verbs. Somewhere along the line, you're going to be struggling, thinking, "Oh, I'm having to change this. What's going on?" So, for qala, you do this. You you change it to kulna. Now you've made this adjustment. Everything else for this verb just going to follow. You keep that same thing. Kulta, kultuma, kultum, kultuma. Sorry, kulti, kultuma, kultunna. The endings are all the same, but you have to make some adjustment to the start of the word to make it fit. So that's what our irregular verb is. And the reason why qala has been used as a demonstration is because qala comes in the Quran that many times. Comes a lot in the Quran, roughly. Right? Comes a lot. So this irregular verb has been used by the book. Boy, girl, find it there. And then we're doing the same to kana. Kana, we're doing the same. Okay? So kana. Kana, kanu. So far, we're good. Kanat, kanata. We're going to put the next one. Kanana. So you have to make some adjustment. It's not going to work. And the adjustment you made that is similar to qala. You're going to say kunna. Okay? Kunta, kuntuma, kuntum, kunti, kuntuma, kuntunna, kuntu, kunna, kunna. The rest is all pretty much the same. It's just that you have to put a dhamma on the calf there and then everything else would work. So the book only did qala and kana, so I only, you know, did these. You have wajada, another one. Wajada, wajada, wajadu, wajadat, wajadata. Yeah, wajadna. What do you do? You know, do you, that, the adjustment for that may be somewhere else. Right? It might even be possible that in the past tense, there is no adjustment for some verbs. It's maybe only in the present tense that you get adjustment. Okay, but you do get a problem, and that's the, that's the issue with the weak verbs. That was all for lesson six. How are we doing for time? I think we're good for time. These were the words again, look more root words. But qala, 892 times that the word qala appears in the Quran. I Meaning not just qala, the verb qala. So qala, yaqulu, yaquluna, uh, taquluna, you know, all the different sort of combinations, right? Roughly coming out like this. And to be on the safe side, I put a slightly lower number to be on the safe side, right? The actual numbers might be a bit higher than this. And we have to count some, we have to count individually and it's a bit tricky, so. 7, 8, 9, 10, 4 lessons left, okay? So, present tense verbs. So we've done past tense verbs. The past tense verbs, you get the root word and you put something a suffix you put a something attach something at the end of the verb now we're doing present tense this is an example of present tense kataba he wrote oh look you've added you've added a prefix here you've added something at the start of the verb so the rule for present tense verbs is you add something to the start of the verb okay this one you add to the end but you add you have a start there as well right so kataba yaktubu yaktubuna these examples, Alima he knew, Ya'lamu he knows, Ya'lamuna they all know. So I just put Ja'ala here, Ja'ala, Yaj'alu, Yaj'aluna. And you might be thinking yourselves, yes, this has come in the Quran. I know this comes in the Quran a lot. Right? Raja'a, Yarji'u, Yarji'una. And this slide highlights this. What is that highlighting? What is that showing? That is showing that look, sometimes this has a dhamma. This third letter has a dhamma. Sometimes it has a fatha and sometimes it has a kasra. The rest are all the same. They start off with the fatha. The second one has a sukun, a jazam on it. The third one, the, the fourth one has um, a dhamma on the end, a pesh. But the middle one, it's sometimes a dhamma, sometimes a fatha, sometimes 
a kasra. I sometimes it's a pesh, sometimes it's a zubr, sometimes it's zir. And the question was, how can you tell what you know which one it's supposed to be? And the answer was, someone want to type the answer? Okay, simple answer. You can't, right? So yeah, there's no formula. So you just have to remember for kataba the verb kataba it's got a dhamma there. For ja'ala, it's a fatha. For raja'a, it's, it's a kasra. So the way to do it is when you learn a past tense verb, learn the present with it. That's why if you look in the previous vocabularies I've just gone through, the past verb, the root verb was there, and the present tense was with it. It was with it so that you can learn what the third letter, what the vowel on the third letter is. So you'd learn kataba yaktubu, ja'ala yaj'alu. Raja'a yarji'u. You do it that so you know. Now you can even think in the Quran, okay, I read, is it yarji'u? Is it yarji'un? Is it yarja'u? Oh, here's a yarji'un, I think, in the Quran, right? So yarji'un. Summum bukum umum fam la yarji'un. So you know that yarji is a ji for that. So if you, you know, you, you know, if you're used to reading the Quran or you have to the Quran, then you can maybe go back to that word and think, how is it in the Quran? Ah, yes, there. You might be able to figure it out like that. But really, the way you learn it is Raja'a yarji'u, ja'ala yaj'alu, kataba yaktubu. And then once you know the sign on that third letter, it carries on to the whole table. That same letter carries on, the same sign carries on the whole way through for all its different combinations. And this is the table for, past, for present tense. So the red ones are the addition templates. Yeah? Yaktubani, yaktubuna. Look, the una is appearing here in plural. Like, remember muslimuna? Like the nouns? Well, some of it's coming back now in the present tense verbs. So these are the additions we had to learn. And um, the main take-home message, the masculines start in ya, third person, and the second person starts in ta. The rest is all the same. Look, this one here and this one here are exactly the same, except these all begin with ya, these all begin with ta. And that was the take-home message, because many the, the feminine ones are tricky, and they don't come a lot in the Quran. But the masculine ones learn them. And if you're struggling, drop the duels. If you're struggling, don't give up, but drop the duels. Just you know, cover put put a piece of paper over the stick a piece of paper over the the duels, right? Because the singular and plurals are the ones that come. And this is the um, boy girl one. This is, it was difficult searching the numbers in the Quran, so what I did here is from my own sort of head, what I understood to be the ones that occur most in the Quran, you know, I've left them black and I've greyed out the other ones. Look, I've greyed out the duels and I've greyed out the women. So, yaktubu, yaktubuna, remember them too. Taktubu, taktubuna, remember them. The ta is for second person, the ya is for third person, and aktubu, naktubu, naktubu. If you really want to cut down the table, that's how you cut it down. Down with the important ones. So again, we just did uh, practice. Ta'lamu, you know. Ya'lamu, he knows. Again, all oh, beautiful. Wallahu and Allah ya'lamu, he knows. Wa antum and you all, la ta'lamuna, you all do not know. Very powerful that. Right, so ta'lamuna, you all have ilm, you all know. Ya'lamuna. They all have ilm. They know. And there was many more examples. I've, I've cut out the examples because, um, you know, that was in the lessons. <clears throat> These are the verses here. Look, وَيَخْلُقُ And he creates مَا لَا What not تَعْلَمُونَ You all know. So you all know. Remember, you all know. And the, the ya is he knows. The ta is you know. The ya is he knows. So remember, get used to the ta meaning you and ya meaning him. That's really, that's a take home lesson there. Okay. So these are some more words. Lesson eight.
three lessons left. Right, so the good news was you don't have to learn a separate table for future. You've learned your past tense tables, you've learned your present tense tables, job done. Right? For future, it is exactly the same as a present tense table. So the present tense table is also a future tense table. But with future, how you know how can you tell what the difference is? So the difference is this. Three ways you can tell. You know, for everything when I say there's three ways or there's two ways, it's like, you know, there might be more if you go into advanced Arabic, you know, but I'm just saying generally, you know, for basics, this is what it is, right? Because I don't know advanced, so there might be things that, you know, so I'm just teaching you at the basic level, right? <clears throat> so, one of the ways you can tell a verb is future is when the present tense is used. You have to use the present tense because it's the same present tense can be future as well. So what is the way you can tell? So the way you tell is the present tense is used, but the context of the sentence is telling you it's in the future. So look, Quran. Then, <clears throat> literally, this means he gathers yajma'u. He gathers kum you all. He gathers you all. That's what yajma'u kum means. He gathers you all. Yeah, yajma'u. He gathers kum you all. But look what it's talking about. It's talking about on the day of judgment. So then, he gathers you all on the day of judgment. Doesn't make sense. It's a future tense sentence. It's future. It's happening in the future. So you translate it as, then he will gather you all. So yajma'akum here means he will gather you. Because the sentence is talking about the future. It's like I say, I walk to the shop. That's fine. But now I say, tomorrow, I walk to the shop. Right? Now that walk has become future. Tomorrow, I will walk to the shop because I'm talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about the future. So you would translate that present verb now in the future as a future verb. So that's one way you, you can tell. The second way you can tell is when so far comes before the present verb. So, so far soon. Translates as soon sometimes, as far as I know. Soon, ta'lamun, you will all know. So, you shall you shall know, you will know. So when sofa comes in front of a present tense verb, it becomes future tense. And also, when just the sa, so just imagine the wow and the fa have been taken off and the scene is joined onto that ta. That is also future tense. So when the sa joins onto a present verb, it makes it future tense as well. So sayaj'alullah means Allah will make because the scene makes it future. So the scene makes it future, the sofa makes it future, and just the present tense by itself in a future um, in a future sentence, meaning in a sentence that you know is talking about the future, it also then becomes future tense. Um, and the other thing to remember was sofa normally indicates far in the future, and sa normally indicates close in the future you know in, in the near future and in the far future easy way to remember so far is longer than sa so so far longer the longer future and sa is short so shorter short future and this one also mentioned rust and yust i always i used to get mixed up in these but then i thought you know and then you know um Either you know, I don't know if I thought it or I heard it from somewhere, but Allah Taala showed me an easy way to remember it, and that is this. Rusr is harder to say, and yusr is easy to say because with rusr you have to say the ain, and the ain is harder to take out. Rusr is harder to say. Yusr is nice and easy, right? So yusr means ease, and rusr means hardship. And then this was a sentence that this yajmaqum um, is mentioned in. Oh yes, so then then we did this. So in nouns you get cases marfu, masub, majrur, remember, and also in present tense verses, not past tense, present tense verses. You also get you don't call them cases though. We call them in English we call them moods, moods. It's just a type of mood that it's in. So let's just show you what that what it does. So yaktubu is default. 
that is marfu. You can see the marfu in the look, the dhamma. In verbs, it's also happening for singular verbs. Yaktuba means is in mansub. And yaktub is majzum. Majzum means it's being jazamified. Look, jazam. So you call it sukun or you can call it a jazam. I was taught jazam when I was a little kid. Um, I think when they teach zabar zair pesh, they teach jazam. But in Arabic ones, the Uthmani font, when they, when they teach fathadam makasra, they teach sukun. Right? So that's what's going on. So marfu, it's got the dhamma, mansub, it's got the fatha, majzum, it's got the um, sukun, the jazam. And basically all that happens <coughs> is this. Default is marfu even in present verbs. This is the default table. The table we've learnt is default. It's the default one for present verbs. What a default means is basically it is marfu. All these words are marfu. Yaktubu, yaktubani, yaktubuna is marfu. Yaktubu, taktubani, yaktubna, marfu. All these are marfu. So if you were just to write start of a sentence with these verbs, it will be marfu. Because in noun land, something has to come before it to change it into majroor and masub, right? Remember? Right. In verb land, present verb land, something has to come before it to cause it to change as well. And what comes before it? These. <clears throat> These are words called controllers. I don't know what they call them in Arabic, but controllers in English. Just a group of words. These words are mansubifiers. So what they're going to do is when they come in front of a present tense verb, they're going to make it mansub. And how does a present tense verb become mansub? Like this. This is mansub here. This is marfu, mansub. I'm just going to flick through these. Look, marfu and mansub. What's happening in marfu land? The dhamma of the singulars, where it is, is becoming a fatha, mansub. And also the noons are all dropping, except the the women. So the women, three women and two women, three women there and three women there. Third person, second person, super strong. The noon doesn't drop. They keep their noon. All of the noons are dropped. So all that means is, again, when one of these controllers comes in front of one of these words, the grammar changes to that. The meaning is the same. Yaktubu means the same as yaktubuna. But now it's going to be that they all write. Yeah? You know? So the, sent the sentence obviously, is a, the meaning is the same, but it's going to be that. And if you stick an an, that they all write. Right? But yaktubu means the same as yaktubuna. The noon will drop sometimes, but the meaning is the same. So this is grammar rule. So one of the benefits of knowing this is sometimes you might see you might see yakfuru and say, what's yakfuru? I don't yakfuru now. What's yakfuru? Why was the noon disappeared? It's disappeared because a controller has come in front of it to cause it to disappear. That's one of the ways it disappears. Some, there's other ways as well, but this is like, this is the way that the book taught. Um, there are other ways as well. But maybe those other ways are a bit trickier, so it's not mentioned. But this is one of the ways. Right? Right, so I've um, got more look. Okay, yeah, right. So example, yaktubu means he writes. When you stick an an in front of it, it means that he writes. So the mood has changed a bit now because it's talking, it's not just he writes, it's that he writes, you know, that sort of thing. But the actual word yaktuba means the same as yaktubu, he writes. It's just that you're sticking an an there. An, an is a mansubifier, so it mansubifies the verb. Example two. I don't think you've got these examples in there because I've been adding to the slides and I've not changed the booklet yet. But next time, inshallah, for the next course, there will be a new booklet will have pretty much these slides in as well. I keep the Lamborghini and things like that. I think I keep them a bit quiet. I won't put them in the book. I'll spoil the fun. So, so you've got Yaktubuna. Yaktubuna, they're all right. And then An has come in front of it that... So yaktubu na, it can't have the na because this is a mansubifier. It's mansubified this. So the noon has dropped. The noon has dropped and a while, just an alif has appeared there. Um, it may be a tajweed thing that to separate between this verb and the next verb. But that's what that's how it looks in the Quran. And then these were examples here of 
um, verbs. This is default ya'lamu. But this one here, wali, this is a mansubifying controller. Wali ya'lama. So it's not going to be wali ya'lamu. No, it's going to be wali ya'lama. And then, so they were the mansubifying controllers. Now, these set are the majzumifying controllers. These ones are going to make the word majzum. So what goes on in majzum land? This. All these are the same. Look, the noons are still dropped here, except the plural women. All the rest of the noons are dropped, and this single woman here, noons dropped there as well. So that's the same as mansub land. This is mansub, look, mansub land. The only difference is the futhas have become jazm. They've jazmified. That's what majzum means. It means jazmified. Right? It's been jazmed. Um, so that's the only difference. So it's going to be yaktub, taktub, taktub. Right? Because these controllers came in front of it and they changed it to this. So if these controllers come in front of the marfut word, they will change it to majzum straight away. That's what will happen. It's just that I'm showing you that masub and majzum are very similar. Right, so we did this. So yeah, there's a marfut one. Mansub. Right, done. So, taktubu. You write. When you get a la in front of it, then it's la taktub. It's not going to be la taktubu. It's going to be la taktub. Taktubuna, you all right. When you stick a la in front of it, it's a madzumifier, this one, madzumifier. It's going to knock off the noon. It's going to become madzum now. Right? You need to know this to do the next thing. So two reasons I wanted to show you this. One was, if you see taktubu anywhere, you say, oh, what's going on? I know taktubu now. What's taktubu? Why is the noon? Where's the noon gone? This is a new word I'm stuck. All, you know, you're doing here is... Okay, somebody's got their, someone has their camera on. If you just want to check your cameras, make sure, or just put some blue tack on, on your camera or something. I can't see it here, so it won't come on the recording, inshallah, but, um, you know, all the students can see your face, so, you know, like that. So, might as be a wise idea for sisters just to put their hijabs on, um, just in case, by accident. You know, that button is easy to press, especially on a tablet. It's like bottom corner or something, bottom left, and you just press it by accident, you know, so it might be a good idea. Yeah. Right. So, taktubuna. Taktubuna, you all right. And la taktubu, you all do not write. Right? The noon dropped. The word is the same. But there's a la coming now, which means don't do that thing. Right? I'm smiling at the person's name who wrote that. Okay. I mean, it's not their name, it's just the name that they chose to write on there. Right, right. So these were just examples of where majzum is used. Majzum is used expressing or wishing a command, prohibiting something, negating of the past tense, strengthening of the majzum. Right. The imperative is the imperative. There's quite a lot going on with present verbs. The imperative is. Um, somebody asked me a question as well. I've got to get back to them on it as well. Right. The imperative is used so in english it just means command doesn't it it's like a type of command i think it is right so the imperative in arabic is used for commanding something to request something or to make dua it's the same pattern it's the same thing it's like if you're telling your your kid you're using that you know like for example um uh, ukhruj, for example you're telling him leave right you're commanding him because he's a kid or you might be commanding a person, but you use the same pattern, you know, um, um, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. So, for example, I might say to somebody, look, bro, forgive him. So I'll say, Ighfir, forgive, right? But when I'm using that same Ighfir to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can't command Allah. It's the same pattern, but when you're using it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's Ighfir, Ighfir li, Allahumma ighfir li, it means forgive, but forgive me, please forgive me. You're doing dua, right? So it's the same form, but it depends who you're speaking to. It's going to be a command or it's going to be a supplication. But we just call it a command form. So in English, you call it imperative. So we had the rule of how to make a, ver a verb 
how to get a root word and how to take it through the command form machine and make it command form. He likes, he likes it when I say machine. Right. So these were the rules here. We did this two weeks ago, I think. So basically what the rule was is this. You got Alima, which means he knew. I want to now use that root word and convert it to commanding somebody no. Like no, right? That that you you know like that you should know that sort of thing. So ta so alima, you make it into present tense first, ta'lamu, then you make it majzoom, ta'lam, and then you knock off the ta, remember, knock off the ta. If what is left starts off with a sukun, you can't start an Arabic word with a sukun, so you have to put an alif there. You put an alif there. Then you look at the next letter, this one. If it has a dhamma on it, you stick a dhamma on the alif. If it has a fatha or a kasra on it, you make a, you put a kasra there. So that's going to become i'lam. I'lam. So these are all the lessons. Ja'ala becomes taj'alu, becomes taj'al, and then knock off the ta. The jim has a sukun, so you stick an alif. Look at the next letter, that has a fatha. If it has a fatha or a kasra, you stick a kasra on the alif. If it has a dhamma, you stick a dhamma. In this case, it's a fatha, so you stick a kasra there. Right? We've done that. Qatala, taqtulu, taqtul. Now you knock off that. If this one's got a dhamma on, so the alif is going to have a dhamma on. Uqtul. It's not going to be iqtul, it's going to be uqtul. Ghafara, taghfiru, taghfir, ighfir. And that's what you get. Allahumma ghfir lana. It's Allahumma ighfir. But this hamza, it's a hamza on here, it's a hamza tul um, wasal, which means the letter before it when, it, when when it comes, it's going to absorb the alif and it's going to become waghfir. So some, some of the, one of the sisters is taking the hijab off and she's got a camera on, so please uh, go behind the screen and then just, um, yeah, just turn the, put something on, put a masking tape on or um, blue tack or something. Right, um, Alima, I've made a mistake on this slide and I didn't correct it for the revision. So this should have no, this have no um, alif there, it should just be ta'lamuna. So ta'lamuna, make it majzoom, it becomes ta'lamu, and then i'lamu. This means you all know, you all know. No, right? And these are the imperatives for um, kataba. So why do we not use third person? Because when you're commanding somebody, you can't command somebody who can't hear you. So you're commanding only in second person. And you don't command yourself. So it's just commanding um, somebody who can hear you. So uktub, uktuba, uktubu, uktubi, uktuba, uktubna. Them are the six ways of commanding somebody to write. So you write, you two write, you all write. You write, woman. You two women write, you all women write. And that's it. So it's command command form. Um, and it's imperative in English. I think. So here, unsur akhaka zaliman or madluman. It's a hadith, yeah? Hadith in Bukhari. Unsur help. Can you see it's being used here? Look, sukun. I've generally not put a sukun on in this course because it just, I think it's, you know, like, it takes quite a bit of time and it clutters it. So I left the sukuns empty. I left the raw empty when the sukun there. But in this, I must have copied and pasted it so it had it on, so I left it on. So unsur, help. Akhaka, your brother, zaliman, whether he is a zalim oppressor or, or madluman, he is oppressed. Maf'ul pattern within lesson 10. Um, this is, yeah, some more words. Lesson nine, two lessons left. We've got 20 minutes, so I think that's about right. Actually, we've got 10 minutes, 15 minutes about. Right, again, so present tense has weak verbs as well. The rule for the weak verbs is the same. Alif ya in the root letter, or two um, second and third root letters are the same. Everything else is regular. This is an example of to see, alam tara kaifa, to see, 
past and present, you can see the difference. This is a weak verb though. And um, here is a hadith, the hadith of Jibreel. Um, and it has Tara in there. This one, so I just explained it a bit. Tara, Tara. Right? So, again, for the verb Qala, we're going to do it in present tense now. And present tense, let's see what the problem is. Qala. How do you say, you know, to? How do you say, he writes? Yaqulu. That's not obvious from Qala. Qala, Qala, Qalu. Yaqulu. Yaqulani, Yaquluna. Taqulu. Taqulani. So this one's a bit tricky. Yaqulna. Right, so the wow disappeared there. And that's the sort of adjustment you have to make to this one. You couldn't say Yaqulna. Yeah, you couldn't say Yaqulna. So something dropped there. So again, the irregular verbs, sometimes a problem putting them in the tables. And they have that one table. It's, 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 pretty much, it's the same table, it's just that you have to make some adjustment. Right? It's the same table as the regular present tense. Same. Look at the endings are all the same. But you have to make some slight adjustment. So, taqulu, taqulani, um, taquluna, taqulina, taqulani, taqulna, aqulu, naqulu, naqulu. Again. So that was what um, happens in present tense with a weak verb. You have to make some adjustment there. But that's all the combinations for the verb qala. That's the mansub version. The noons drop in and the dhamma endings are becoming fatha. Means the same. This means the same as this one. It's just, and look, the plural women stay the same. They don't change. And this is the madzum. Look, so in, in the weak verb for qala, there's a bit more difference. There's a bit more happening in the Mazum. Look. Just look, look at this. Yaqulu becomes Yaqula. Now if you put a Mazum, you put a Sukun there. In Arabic, you don't get two Sukuns coming together. You don't get a Wawid Sukun and a Lam Sukun coming together. So something has to give. So the Waw drops. So so Mazum is going to be Yaqul. Taqul. Taqul. Taquli. Aqul. Naqul. Naqul. Everything else, look at this one here, stays the same. Right, so this is a slight extra difference that's happening in the weak verb for qala. Some adjustments happening, so just need to be aware of that. And this is the fi'l amr, this is the command form for qul. Let's just see how. Let's just do it. Yaqulu, make it into, so qala became yaqulu, now do second person, taqulu, so become taqulu, now make it madzum, taqul, now knock off the ta, knock off the ta, if what remains behind has a sukun on it, stick an alif there, does it have a sukun on it? No, it has a haraka on it, you can begin a word with a haraka, so job done, knock off the ta, qul, qul ya ayu kafirun qul means say, yeah, so we did that. Kula, you two say. Kulu, you all say. And that's this one here. Kuli, kula, kulna. Them are the command forms for say. Say, singular. You two say. You all say. And then for feminine, you say woman. You two women say. You all say women. And then we did the same for kana. So yakunu, yakunani, yakununa. Takunu, takunani, yakunna. And that's all the table for that. We did the same. What's happening? Noon's becoming scorn. Yeah, Akunu becomes Akuna. Like Akuna Matata. Right? Akunu becomes. And look what happens in Mazum land. Yakun, now you're going to have, we've got a wow jism there, you've got a noon jism there. You can't have two jisms coming together, so Yakun. And also, you can say yaku as well, just the way it is for, for kana, you can say yaku as well. Um, daku, these are the combinations that we covered, yeah? I think the Quran says, walam aku baghiya, right? Aku comes in the Quran. And that's how you say kun. Kun means be. How do we do it? Let me show you again. Right? So you do 
كان بيكونز تكونو هو سينجلا تكونو تكونو بيكونز مجزوم تكون then you knock off the ta what remains behind if it has a haraka job done it has a haraka so kun kun fayakun be and it is kunu you all be right so that's where this comes from rahima yarhamu here the present tense as well you see that one has a fatha on it raja'a yarji'u this has a kasra on it this one third letter right these are times in the quran and lesson 10 we've got about five six seven minutes left over here we just mentioned that ja'a means he came you're going to use he came when you're talking about a person a male i a male person or a masculine thing you're not going to say ja'at ja'at means she he came so for a masculine you're going to use a masculine verb and for a feminine you're going to use the feminine word ja'at simple and straightforward i just put that in because it was there I don't understand what sister wrote there. Inform us. I'll inform you, inshallah, via email. If you, I'll maybe make a separate group for anybody who wants to be informed of the future class. Um, but these WhatsApp groups, maybe after the course is done, they'll be closed off, inshallah. But I'll maybe post an alternative group in Telegram. I think we're going to start using Telegram um, because it's more. And start using Telegram and shot like it's more, you can add more, have more users on it, it's much easier. So, this is the last lesson, lesson 10. So, this is how to make the doer of a, of a verb from a root word. So, kataba means he wrote. How do I say it, writer? You put it through the fa'ilun machine, right? Fa'ilun pattern. So, fa'ala goes through fa'ilun. If fa'ala becomes fa'ilun, then kataba becomes katibun. Right? Katibun means writer. It can also mean the action, but mostly it means the doer. Right? Volama means he oppressed. Valimun is the oppressor. Same pattern goes through this pattern here. This we did last week. Alima means he knows. Alimun means the knower, the one who knows, the, the knowledgeable person. Kafara means to dis he disbelieved. Kafirun is the one who disbelieves, so a disbeliever. So that fa'ilun makes it into the doer of what the verb is. So, Raja'a means he, to return. Raja'un means returner, the one who returns. Dhakara means to remember, he remembered. Dhakirun means rememberer. So you might know Dhakirnaik, for example, you might want to remember it this way. Dhakir, his name means rememberer. From Dhakara, which means to remember. So Dhakir means the one who remembers. Right? Okay. Um, so this next one is the pattern for when the verb is happening to that thing what name do you give it so kataba means he wrote put it through the maf'ul machine you put fa'ala through the maf'ul machine you put kataba through the maf'ul machine you get maktubun 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 means written it's the verb is happening to that thing so when you put maktub it means basically it's a thing that you call it's the thing that you say when that verb is happening to it. So the verb has happened, the writing has been done, so it's written. Volama, it means he oppressed. So the thing the thing that is having the Zalama done on it is Madhlumun. Madhlumun is Urdu word, it means oppressed. So Zalim is the oppressor, Madhlum is the oppressed. Alima means to know. Ma'lum is when Alima is done, right? So Ma'lum means known. It's known. I don't know what mem. Where will the mem come from? I might be surprised. I don't know what mem means. What does mem mean? Or does it mean meme? Oh, that's how you spell mem. All right, okay, I'm totally confused. All right, so next one. Meme, okay, right. Where does the meme come from? Good question. It's part of the template there, look. So the fa'ala, fa. So this is a template maf'ul, maf'ul. So you have to have to stick a meme to put it in this pattern. But then the first root letter is there. So in this case it will be k for mak. And then the second root letter, fa'ala, is there. So maktu. A wow appears as well. So maktu and then bun. So it's from there, the fa'ala. 
You might have listened to the previous lesson, lesson 10. Right? So it's the pattern, maf'ul pattern. The meme appears and the wow appears. You have to just pluck in the rest of the root letters into that pattern. So, alima wa bikum ma'lumun. Shahida, mashhudun. So the meme appears, the first root letter then comes, then the second root letter comes, then a wow appears, and then the third root letter comes. Right? From there to there. So, shahida, mashhud. Right? Means the thing that the witness is being done on, so witnessed. Okay, next one. Mustard, we did mustard. We're running out of time, got three, four minutes left. Right, so. Um, when fa'ala goes to fu'ulun, it makes the mustard. The mustard is the ans and the ing of the verb. So he left, leaving. Dhakara, he remembered, remembrance. Sabara, he was patient. Sabrun, patience. Uh, basura, to see, he saw. Fa'alun goes to basarun. And what we learn is you can't tell which master pattern for which verb. You have to remember that with the verb. So you learn kharaja yakhruju khurujun. That's the proper way to learn the verb. Some will add even another one to it, but for the time being, kharaja yakhruju khurujun. That way you'll know for kharaja, the pattern is khurujun. But dhakara yadhkuru dhikrun. The master is dhikrun. You have to remember for dhakara it's dhikrun. For sabara, it's sabrun. For basura, it's basarun. So you'd learn the past, and you'd learn the present, and you'd learn the master for the verb. This is now the name of the place. Look, sajada is sajda. You put it in a maf'ilun pattern, masjidun. It's the place of prostration. Yeah, it's got sajada in there, but masjidun pattern, maf'ilun pattern makes it into the place of that verb. Sakana is sukun, where you rest. Your home. Well, second is where you rest, sorry. Maf'alun is maskanun. Maskanun is the place of rest. The place of relaxing. Maskanun also means house. More commonly, baytun is house. Darasa, to study. Maf'alatun is also another pattern for the place of that verb. And madrasatun is the school, the place of that verb. Very quickly, going on to the next one. Fa'ala. Sorry. Fataha, okay, the, the object, the instrument of the noun. So Fataha, what is the instrument that opens? Miftahun, Miftahun is key. And also another one, Araja, is to go up. How do you call the instrument to go up? What do you call that? Mi'rajun. Mi'rajun is a ladder, ladder step. And the Salah is about to start, so I'm going to have to nip off, right? And just end the, end the class as well. Um, inshallah. So let's just um, wrap it up. So that was the revision from lesson one to lesson um, ten. And on Wednesday, these are all the tables here. They all should be in your slides. We will uh, on Wednesday, uh, inshallah, we will go through the last class, which will be a talk on the khushu importance of salah, especially before Ramadan. We need it, inshallah. And also, we're going to go through the word-to-word -word meaning of the salah. And we're going to apply what we've learned in the class, inshallah. That'll be the last class, inshallah. Then after that, you know, enjoy Ramadan, right? Jazakallah um, khairan. I will see you, inshallah, on Wednesday. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.